Hey everybody, we are Bad Content. Uh, I am Chris, this is my friend Joseph, what up? And, and this is Psych Papers, where we will take each episode and in each episode we'll review a different psychological study and we'll talk about it, we'll describe it, we'll go into the, the methods and the results and what they found and we'll pick some uh, kind of more interesting ones that you've probably heard of before and also ones that you probably haven't. I am currently finishing up my PhD in experimental psychology. I'll be defending my dissertation hopefully in a couple weeks. Uh, so that's been very exciting. Um, but yeah, and Joseph has always had an interest in psychology. Yeah, Joseph, you want to intro yourself? I thought you were going to say this is my friend Joseph. <laughs> this is my friend Joseph. <laughs> we, met, we met an improv in Chicago years ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we have a podcast together. <laughs> well, uh, this is bad content. Welcome to Psych Papers. So today uh, we're going to talk about the Milgram study. It's about obedience to authority. Joseph, have you heard of this? The Milgram, before? like, oh, oh sorry, uh, Stanley Milgram. That's the main oh, okay. experimenter on it. I think we've may have talked about this before in the past, but do do you remember this study? No, I don't. It, like, it's not coming to mind right now. Cool. Um, so this study happened in what, 1963? Um, so after World War II, the U.S. arrested a bunch of Nazi soldiers and put them on trial, famously known as the Nuremberg Trials. And many of their defenses were, I was just following orders. And this was not good enough for the U.S. judicial system, and all of them got thrown in prison. Wait, Stanley you're telling <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was early defense, like my well, B. Well, I'm sure they had other defense. <laughs> my B. I just, I d they I just told me to. Do to. I didn't want to mass murder thousands of people of the same religion. I I was ordered, and I'm a people pleaser. Okay, I'm non confrontational. <laughs> I just didn't want to be. I just didn't want to be angry at me. I just didn't want to cause. I didn't want to. I didn't want to have a fight about it. And my and my boss and my boss is very temperamental. You don't want to be on their bad side, you know. <laughs> oh God. So Stanley Milgram wanted to learn about whether the average person would commit an immoral act if an authority figure Wait, ordered them to. How, how many more, How many years is this later? Is this, this is not like Stanley was there during World War II. It's like, hey, that's kind of interesting. How shitty. This no. Is, this shitty. This is a shitty excuse. I want to go more. Wait a second. Yeah. Maybe these Nazis shouldn't be in prison. <laughs> you know? like, Stanley, Stanley, what the hell, man? <laughs> what are you doing, bro? Just asking you questions. I'm not saying they didn't. <laughs> Oh, so I'm, uh, we'll, we'll... This this was years later. This was years later. Okay. Uh, in in 1963, yeah. So Stanley was probably a child when all this happened. Uh, so he wanted to learn: Would an average person commit an immoral act like killing somebody if an authority figure ordered them to? And to study this, he devised the now infamous Milgram obedience to authority experiment. So he brought participants into a lab where a confederate or also known as an actor in the experiment they were in on it. I don't know why. Did you say confederate? That That's what they're called in psychology. I don't know why. Um, there's probably a reason. I haven't looked it up. Uh, but anyone... <laughs> seven so, years of so, this shit? <laughs> you haven't... You, seven seven you, years, and I, I don't know why. You, you don't know why? You just, you just, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't bothered to look it okay, up. So like, you okay, get, that sounds fine. So you get to part yeah, you get to participants. So, 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 here, so here's the cover story that the participant is told. So they're told that the researchers are interested in how punishment influences learning. So how does punishment uh, affect your memory and knowledge and how quickly you learn information? And they want to learn how much punishment is ideal for learning. So they have the real participant and a paid actor in the same room, and they have them draw slips of paper from a hat to decide who will play the role of teacher and who will play the role of learner. Right? Oh, no. So I there's one teacher story. and one learner. <laughs> Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, go ahead. <clears throat> and uh, so they both pull out the slip of paper. The plot twist is that both slips of paper say teacher on it. So no matter what, the participant will always be the teacher, and then the actor will pretend to be the learner, right? And mind you, just as an aside, uh, the actual methods of the study are like way worse when I read the original paper compared to how they taught it in class. We were taught in class like, this study is like a classic Psych 100 intro to psych experiment. 
because uh, it's kind of interesting. It's sexy. It's flashy. It's kind of my uh, advisor one time called it like psych jazz hands because it's just kind of like all these cool unethical studies. You're like, whoa. Like, <laughs> psych isn't, jazz. isn't psych cool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, isn't it cool if we can fuck with people's minds, dude? It was <laughs> fucking sick, dude. Jazz hands. Yeah. And then and then that gets undergrads to like subscribe to the major. I don't know. Yeah, some <laughs> yeah, marketing tactic. I'm, I'm in it for the long run now, yeah. so I can run these unethical <laughs> practices on my friends. Yeah, right. And then so fucking nine years later, I'm getting a PhD in this because I thought that was cool. I'm like, whoa, dude, that's cool, dude. This is fucking sick, dog. I want to yeah. learn more. <laughs> so the setup is that both people are brought into another room where the experimenter starts to strap the learner, as in the paid actor. The learner is the paid actor. They strap the learner into an electric chair. I don't okay? remember this part of the study. <laughs> <laughs> right? I somehow remember it differently. <laughs> Holy shit. This is the 60s, yeah. by the way? This is 1963. <laughs> this is yep. a poor undergrad <laughs> looking to make 20 bucks. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the right. fuck? Going on. Wait, so so the, so the person getting strapped in the oh, chair it's, is the it's, actor. It's actor, the actor. actor. My bad, yes. my bad, my bad. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. actor. But the participant, the undergrad or whoever it is, uh, they witness this just to add to the legitimacy of it. So they see them strap the learner, the actor, into an electric chair. And the experimenter explains that the straps are to prevent excessive movement while the learner is being shocked. Because that's how they're going to punish the learner, the actor. Uh, on, on their memory game. Every time the learner gets something wrong on this memory game, they get shocked. And for that, their arms need to be strapped to the chair, right? I want to be in that. Do they, are there recordings of this? Because I just can't imagine, like, when they're explaining this, they're oh, just there like, are. They're, they're just like, you oh, know, yeah. what? this is like those hidden prank shows are just like, oh my God. Does anyone, else, <laughs> anyone else see what I'm seeing? <laughs> and of course, they're like, it's got to be so weird because the learner the actor obviously being strapped into the chair has to act so nonchalant and chill about it probably being like oh yeah like this is like totally normal yeah like as they're getting strapped in they're like oh yeah you know yeah because i'm you, just you, i'm just yeah. here for like the 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 uh benefit of science you know because <laughs> yeah, they have to they have to be freaked out too like if you want to play like straight they're just like what the fuck dude I'm being, I'm right? being freaking like, the fuck out. I'll be like, what the fuck? Can yeah. I opt out yeah. of this shit? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, they, they're, so they, they're, 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 the the actors is is a uh, is strap. Yep. So, and the purpose was to make it to convey to the participant that it was impossible for the actor to escape. Right. Oh, so uh-huh. the ex- the experimenter then attaches an electrode to the learner's wrist, and w- when I say learner, that's the same as actor. So they attach an electrode to the wrist. And the participants are told that the electrode is attached to a shock generator in the adjacent room. This is, so there's a room right next to them. There's a wall in between them. Okay? So here's the learning task that the uh, actor or learner has to conduct. So the participants are brought into an adjacent room. where That's where the shock generator is. And so the participant is administering like a memory game to the actor. So the participant reads out two words. And then we'll read out the first word followed by four new words. And then the learner has to indicate which word was a part of the original pair. By pressing different buttons, that causes uh, different lights to flash on the participant's machine. The exact memory game and the rules of that game aren't important, but it's that there are right and wrong answers. All right. The shock generator has 30 switches in a horizontal line. And each switch is an increased voltage. It goes from 15 volts to 450 volts. And so the switches have labels from slight shock, which is like 15, 30 volts. That would be like a a very annoying, painful shock. Uh, Moderate shock, strong, very strong, intense, extreme intensity, danger, severe shock. And then the last two switches just are marked with XXX. Ah. That's it. (laughs) Yep. The participant, to add to the legitimacy of this, gives themselves a test shock. So they will shock themselves 45 volts just to like let them know, being like, hey, by the way, like it's real, right? Yeah. Because they have to buy into it. The learner, the actor, is not getting shocked at all, but they think they are, right? So each time the learner gets a wrong answer, the participant is instructed to deliver an increasing level of shock. And the participant is also instructed to announce the voltage of 
each time to further remind them of the increasing intensity of the shocks, right? Okay, so the actor, the learner, follows a routine of giving incorrect answers, right? Because for this to work, they have to give incorrect answers to get shocked. And so they'll, the actor will purposely give a series of incorrect answers, and the participant continues to increase the shock voltage on them, right? Once they get to shock level 300, 300 volts out of 450, the actor starts giving vocal protests. So once after the 300 volt shock, they'll start pounding uh, on the wall. As in like, he he'll, he starts kicking uh, the wall between them and kind of like yelling it out. Like, and, you know, like, please it, stop. It, this is scripted, right? This, this is something they it's had all to scripted. Say. This is all just how, this yep. is, okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yep, so always at 300 volts, that's when they start like pounding on the wall uh, in protest. And the pounding can be heard by the participant, you know, obviously. From this point, the learners the, or the actors' answers no longer appear on the participants' machines. So they just stop providing answers. It's just no response. This is the point where the participant usually turns to the experimenter for guidance. And mind you, the experimenter is always in a gray technician's coat. The experiment is taking place in like a very fancy laboratory. All of this just to kind of further emphasize authority, right? So the experimenter instructs the participants to treat the absence of a response as a wrong answer and to shock them accordingly, right? Oh According to the usual schedule. Almost. So they don't hear anything. Shock them so, anyway. so they're pounding and they're and they're not playing the game anymore. They're 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 not providing an answer. And the and the experimenter is like, nope, keep shocking them. So they continue. After 315 volts, one more after that, the learner pounds on the wall one more time. And then after that, he doesn't provide any more protests. He, he, he doesn't scream or pound at all anymore. And it's just silent. And he doesn't give any more answers. And they continue the game. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the part of the prank show where they'll be looking at, like, the, you know, the inspector like, be like, dude, are you, are you sure? This is crazy. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's video that maybe we'll throw up right now. Continue, please. Go on. There's a lot of them here, you know. You have a heart condition there. You want me to go? Just continue, please. Sh sharp. Axe, needle, stick, blade. Answer, please. Wrong. Up to uh, of the participant uneasiness. So at multiple points during the study, participants had indicated their unwillingness to continue. And there were always a series of prods that the experimenter would give. So if the participant would ever be like, kind of be like, hey, I'm not sure I want to do this. Prod one was, please continue. And then if they continued to protest, the next one would be, the experiment requires that you continue. The next one was, it is absolutely essential that you continue. And then the last prod they would give is, you have no other choice. You must go on. This sounds like a science fiction movie. You know, like, uh, like, right? se like separate wise, like you. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is absolutely uh, essential uh, that you continue. Uh, <laughs> like, who wrote Jesus, this the, who like, Jesus the, like, the like strength of this language is so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> who talks like, they don't talk like this in the 60s, do they? It's absolutely essential. <laughs> <laughs> um oh my god and so this was all to get the participant to continue of course there's no real power that the experimenter has they can walk out anytime they want with no consequences right uh and there was a special prod if the if the subject said that the learner didn't want to go on so if the participant was like hey i don't think my co-participant like wants to continue the re reply was whether the learner likes it or not, you must go on until he has learned all of the word pairs correctly. Oh, no! So please go on. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. It's like please Yeah, please continue. You have to continue. <laughs> right? It's like a fucking robot giving you instructions. Seriously. Oh, my God. So the main experiment was interested in how high of a voltage would participants go up to? Um, and... I will get into the results in a second, but of course, so afterward, the subject and learner, they got to meet 
and they had a friendly reconciliation and they were like, hey, by the way, you know, I was I was a paid actor the whole time. You know, <laughs> you know. Chris, Chris Kennedy, I hope there's there has to be like a prank prank video cut of this. Oh my <laughs> God, yeah. this <laughs> <laughs> you I'm just like, you just got studied on Stanley Milgram's yeah. obedience to authority. <laughs> There's a camera there, right there, <laughs> right there. <laughs> wave, wave. <laughs> little camera crew. Oh man. Wait. So okay. So the the, the jig is up at the end. Once once once. Wait. Yeah. So once they. So yeah. So at at some point the experiment stops because if they get to the highest voltage, then and they continue, then the experiment's over. Or if they protested enough, or. If they were like, if they gave five protests to stop, then they would stop. Then they would stop the experiment. Such a the such point a researcher, was to see how far they would go. Well, such a researcher's thing to set. It's just like you have to add these like metrics to make oh, it yeah. a re- reusable study. Okay, all right. So I think five is a good number for for them to five five times. Yeah, they right? bring out and it's such a number value. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. What percentage of people do you think got to the maximum voltage? 450, and this is the one that's marked just XXX after d- danger and extreme. If I can recall from us talking about it, and just I'm 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 feeling pretty high percentage. I want to say 100 percent of them went all the way. Oh no no not so not 100 percent. Okay, six 65 percent. Okay, that's still a lot. 65 <laughs> percent so went to the maximum voltage. Yep. 88% continued even after the learner started pounding on the wall and the answers stopped coming in. Okay, that's what I, I think that's what I remember. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody got to at least 300 volts. And this is the first point where they started, you know, pounding on the wall. I'd like to ask you, how do you feel though? I feel all right, but I don't like what's happened. That I fall in there, he's been howling and we had to keep giving him shocks. I didn't like that one bit. I mean, he's, he wanted to get out and he just kept going, kept throwing 450 volts. I didn't like that. He wouldn't even look at on that gentleman. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going. I told him it's time we stopped when we got up to uh, 195, 210 volts. But why didn't you just stop? He wouldn't let me. I wanted to stop. I kept insisting to stop, but he says no. I told him to look in on the fellow there, but he wouldn't do it. Actually, the uh, the uh, shocks are not dangerous at all. Well, I mean, I didn't hear no more answers from the fellow. I figured he should look be looked in on anyway, but he wouldn't do it. Well, let me ask you something. Is there anything that Mr. Wallace in there could have said that would have gotten you to stop? Well, no, I didn't hear you. The only thing I heard is the shock wasn't uh, too bad. Before, before we kind of dissect that further, I wanted to go over. They talked about some of the shit that happened during the study. Um about the participants just freaking out understandably anybody would feel weird in the situation okay so during the study subjects were observed to sweat tremble stutter bite their lips groan and dig their fingernails into their flesh (laughs) (laughs) the poor undergrad has to watch these videos and be like all right, what are some sort of observable group? <laughs> I, 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 I need to code this shit. I need to code <laughs> all the times they freaked out. So after the maximum shocks had been delivered, that's when the experimenter would like, you know, call a halt uh, to the study. And many of the obedient subjects heaved sighs of relief. They mopped their brows, rubbed their fingers over their eyes, or nervously fumbled cigarettes because it's the 60s. Uh. Some shook their heads, apparently in regret. Some subjects had remained calm throughout the experiment and displayed only minimal signs of oh, tension. No! Oh, Fucking no! put these people on a list. <laughs> oh no! What do you? <laughs> what's what's your general takeaway or feelings or reaction? Oh, from, this is from this? It, this is insane. All about all about this is insane. Okay, well, I the the conceit of it is not. I understand it. It's, it's, it. it's kind of an interesting question to re- research question to resolve. Like, are we compelled? But to sit down and be like, hmm, I wonder how we can. <laughs> just the thought process that comes to constructing it and just like 
Because they, I could, did they run any tests for participants with this? You know what I mean? They, any what? This this wasn't just one go. Someone they must have done run run like run some extra practice ones to see. I thought what's the they flow? They probably of this? did some yeah. pilot tests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god! But like, what did you think of that pilot test? I'm like, you know what? This might not be good for this professor. I don't know about this. <laughs> maybe maybe 20 bucks isn't enough <laughs> compensation. <laughs> All right, yeah, you're right. 50 bucks. I think this is a pretty juicy. We're asking them to do a lot. Yeah. Because part of part of the part of the unethical side of it and the more disturbing part of it was that even if you see the actor come out and be like, "Hey, by the way, I was fine the whole time," you know, a lot of those participants walk away knowing a very disturbing fact about themselves that they yeah. would kill someone, you know, or ch- put someone through intense pain if they were ordered to, at least. Oh my God, I never thought about it. <laughs> I yeah. never thought. Yeah, even though, yeah, they didn't actually try to something, they just walk away just like, who am, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> These hands <laughs> staring at you. <laughs> I'm capable of so much more than I've <laughs> given myself credit for. <laughs> it's those guys. It's those guys that 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 were calm throughout the whole experiment. They were like, "I liked that." <laughs> <laughs> what is this feeling? How do how do I get more? I'd like to sign up for another study, doctor. <laughs> I want to feel complete. <laughs> oh no, dude. I mean, you're right. I did learn something about myself today. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm fucking rad, yeah. dude. Hey, man, if you have any more studies like this, <laughs> I guess so, yeah. hit, hit me up. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, if you got a return study, let me know. I'm, uh, yeah. Know, here's my beeper number or whatever. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> here's my address. Send here's my, you guys send me one, please. So one of the main takeaways is that, as you can kind of put together, People feel disconnected from their actions when they're complying with orders, right? Because they feel like they're not the ones actually enacting the harm. They're merely passive in the whole interaction. Oh, you're passing the blame, you mean? Like, well, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, it's, the, it's easy to my like, intentions. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, the experimenter told me to, and, and they're, they're the authority figure in this. And, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm sure I'm one of many participants that have done this study before. I'm just doing my part, you know? So now imagine in the military, right? You have somebody in like another building giving orders. So they're disconnected from the actual action. Then you have the person complying with the orders. They feel disconnected from the action. So both parties kind of get like plausible deniability to themselves that they're not actually doing anything. So they feel reduced agency. So everybody gets to tell themselves they're not really everyone the gets ones an, committing everyone the heinous gets an act. Out, everyone gets an out? Yeah. I Oh, Oh, because like the person in the building is like, oh, I'm not, I'm not the one that's doing it. I'm not and doing the, it. I'm just giving the orders. Yeah. And the, yeah, the one that's doing it is like, well, I, I didn't, I don't want to, but I'm just following yeah. directions. Oh my yep. gosh! So everyone has an out basically in this scenario. Yep. That's yep. insane. And you can imagine this is like an experimenter. Like if those participants could have walked out at any moment with no consequences, right? Your supervisor or whatever your commanding officer actually has authority over you. And they control like your rank and, and your position and your pay and you know like your, your livelihood. They actually have a lot more authority over you. So the very disturbing finding from this was that, okay, the average person would probably commit a, a terrible act given under the right circumstances. So he's basically, <laughs> what's his name? <laughs> Stan, Stanley Milgram. Stanley Milgram's like, validated i was right <laughs> <laughs> i knew it i knew it wasn't their fault you know they were just following yeah. directions oh jeez oh, it's like stanley it's still not chill what the not fuck? chill stanley <laughs> i'm just saying you know i ran this experiment and I, yeah you know, my hypothesis was true i mean it's just the data it's the data bro <laughs> don't get mad at me don't get mad at the data yeah. dude. <laughs> damn bro all right you thought you thought that was bad? No, there's not. There's another one. <laughs> I thought this is the end of the episode. They're like, okay, so we sign up and another... <laughs> hold on, hold on. Someone read this study. He's like, hmm? I could do you one better. I you could do what? you one better. Ho- 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 <laughs> hold my beer, Stanley. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Okay. All right. 
in 1972, well, like about 10 years later. 10 Charles years! Sh- 10 years is fast, Chris! And no one, in these years, no one's like sitting on like, man, that's really some fucked up shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so 10 years, All right. 10 years later, 10 years later. So Ch- Charles Sheridan and Richard King, they read the Milgram study, and they theorized that the participants, maybe they were just playing along. Right, and they were like, "Well, it's, we're, it's not, we're not real, sure we buy it. and that's fucking fake, bro. It's some fake data, bro." <laughs> right. All right. So to test this, they, oh. they, oh yeah, they replicated Milgram's experiment, but they wanted to make it real, not fake shocks, real shocks. Let's actually shock people, right? But obviously, they can't oh. use they can't use real humans for this. So what did they use? Animals? They used puppies, Joseph. Oh, this is the end of this podcast, Chris. I can't. <laughs> my heart. My heart sank. The moment I know. You it was hard reading it. I know. Well, hold on. These, these motherfuckers like, um, oh, you know, it's, it's unethical to use people. Mm-hmm. How about dogs? <laughs> no, 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 not dogs. Let's get someone who hasn't experienced a full breath of life. Oh, yet. God. Yeah. We need to... <laughs> Innocence. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You can go fucking go, go fucking go like a dog pound. It's like you have any puppies like around that you can borrow? <laughs> can you go to the pound? Hey, can we um can we foster these? Oh yeah. Do you want to do a month? Nah, just a just a couple days. <laughs> we'll bring them back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, br- we'll and we'll bring them back. And they will be obedient by the time we bring them back. So we'll actually we'll train them for you for free. Uh, Dude, do you guys uh, need any any toys? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we we got all we need at back at home. <laughs> Dude, this is uh, I don't I don't like the sounds of this, Chris. The the word the moment you said puppies, I don't I already don't feel good. Okay, yeah, man. But let's, let's let's move on. So they got they're just like okay, fuck humans, fuck right. dogs, let's get puppies. All right. Yep. So the subject, the participants were told that the puppies were being trained to distinguish between a flickering and a steady light. And the puppy had to either stand either to the right or to the left, depending on the light. If the animal failed to stand in the correct place, the subjects had to press a switch to shock the puppy. Similar to the original study, the voltage increased with each wrong answer. Chris, I'm going to cry. I'm literally like feeling so much empathy <laughs> for this puppy. I know. Because I... it's, cause it's I... one thing for a human who's like, consenting to it and they understand what's going to happen a puppy's just like i don't know what's going on oh i know i'm sorry i'm sorry All right, let's, let's get through this let's get through this okay so they run this experiment they, they run it back but real <laughs> <laughs> if you can't think this is already a fucked up thing they, they make it even more oh you think up, that's okay? bad <laughs> <laughs> all right so oh god all right i'll just read this as 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 i read it okay i'm sorry in advance as the voltage increased the puppy first barked then jumped up and down and finally started howling with pain the volunteers or the participants were horrified they paced back and forth hyperventilated and gestured with their hands to show the puppy where to stand they were trying to tell them like no stand over there many of them openly wept yet the majority of them kept pushing the shock button, dude. Oh, this fucker that wrote this, yet, they might feel bad, but... They obviously didn't feel that bad. <laughs> <laughs> 20 out of 26 participants kept pushing the shock button up to the maximum voltage. Oh my god, dude. And the six that protested, they oh, they got pretty far up into the, the, the voltage. So, like, damn, I don't know. I'm trying to think about how you could, like, maybe justify something like, okay, well, if I back out, then the puppy's just going to have to go through it again from the start. So let's just get it. Like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how you, how, you, how you do that. What's this, your... Um, this is the first episode, your... Chris. This is the fucking first episode. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta think. You can at least warm us into like the third or fourth. To, 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 oh, God, to I'm real sorry. Fun. I'm what sorry. Were gonna, no, what was um, your question? Were, were you going to ask me? I was, I was just going to ask like, so what, like, what do you think, bro? <laughs> what, 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 what do you think about this? What's your general oh, takeaway? Dude. What's that? 
satisfied unsatisfied <laughs> <laughs> no okay it's it's strange this something like strange okay i think we have this must be true for this time period as well not just for us you know i think we've talked about this before like if you see like a homeless person like baking in the sun i think either you told me the story we heard a story about something i forget like you're you're more likely to pass by that person but if you see like a like a dog you know or, or i think it's one of us has seen like a dog a lot of people corralling around that dog trying to give it water and food or whatever mm-hmm. um, yeah it's like a different level of empathy right um, yeah yeah but in this is in this one in this experiment the second one they even went further than the other one at least these these sets of participants they even like they didn't even well i don't, I don't want to say they hesitated <laughs> obviously weeping is a good <laughs> suggestion of hesitation but yeah. they, they all went pretty far <laughs> than, than, the, but, than the... But, but imagine them cry imagine them like crying and hyperventilating and freaking out and then the puppy gets it wrong, and it's just like, continue the shock. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And they keep flicking the buttons. It's like, just stop pushing the buttons. I just don't want him to be angry at me. I'm so, I want him to be mad. <laughs> he's, so he's, wearing a, he's wearing a lab coat. <laughs> yeah. He has glasses. Oh, he has a position of authority on me. Oh, oh my God. It, I know. I, I, I know. Okay, and there's there's even more Joseph. <laughs> you thought puppies Babies. were bad, <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, yeah, they they really made Stanley Milgram look like a like a saint. <laughs> like already, this first episode has shown, has demonstrated that there's just three people fucked up in this entire like. Yep. <laughs> in, in this part of academia, just three really fucked up people. So, oh um, on top of that, all right, now it, w- it won't be as bad. It won't be as bad. This next part, the original study has been replicated with the real humans with real shocks, but only up to 150 volts, which would just be very painful, but not, not deadly. Not too bad. Yeah. And, and two thirds of subjects continued all the way. Um, so wait, 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 hold, just... on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so like after these two studies, people were just like. We gotta keep running this back. <laughs> well, no, we don't want to. We gotta, keep, we gotta we, keep doing it. We gotta keep doing it. Well, we gotta replicate. It's important yeah. for data. Th- that study was conducted what two years ago. We gotta see if it's changed. <laughs> <laughs> We're not inhumane. We'll just do a lower voltage. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my um, god. Is a hundred yeah, and fifty? Is that does that is that is that's a stinger, right? That's the, that's the one that doesn't hurt as much. Uh, 150 volts. The, the, the shock. They, they described it as it's like it's very painful. Like the person I saw a video of it, and they would like yelp, but it's like um, like it's like manageable, I guess. It's like okay. it's to the point where you could get a willing volunteer to you know put up with it. Oh my god, I'm already yeah. learning from this podcast. There's a lot of fucked up people. Yep. This part of um, another another study, another one along this in the same vein, followed a similar procedure. Uh, and they showed that employees would follow their boss's orders, even if it went against their like moral codes. All right, you know that's not me, though. You know that's not not me. you, not you. I mean, yeah, my, every, oh. and again, when you when you describe something like a study like this to people, I think most, if not all, people are like, oh, that would be me. I totally. No, this is not me. That's not me. And yeah. that's what because that's what everybody said during the uh, Nuremberg trials, where when all the Nazi soldiers were like, I was just following orders. Everyone was like. Not good enough. You got to be above that, because I would never do that. And then this is kind of showing like, oh, it's, it's like kind of like exposing kind of like like this this dark side of humanity where it's like yeah, yeah. a lot of people would do that. Jeez. Hey everybody, this is the follow up research portion of the podcast where. We supplement uh, the study that we just talked about with some follow-up research that we conducted ourselves uh, to try to learn a little bit more about the topic. So this research was conducted after the Stanley Milgram Obedience to Authority study, and I'll be going over the results now. I was interested in two research questions. Uh, How much does obeying orders mitigate the blame one receives? And how much do people give themselves leniency when evaluating actions? You know, if you litter... Uh, do you view that as worse or better than if you see somebody else litter or do another immoral action? 
it was a uh, two by two between subjects design where we had two variables, one being the target of the judgment, being the self or another person. And what justification did they use? Did they have no justification, meaning they just did it on their own volition? Or were they following orders? Were they using this excuse? Uh, I surveyed 426 MTurkers. This is like an online survey platform. And we paid them to take the survey. It was super brief. And uh, basically, they read a brief vignette, and then they answered two questions. Very, very simple study. So just to clarify, okay. the first for the first question, is basically like, like, oh, the first question is like, oh, hey, like, I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't in charge, you know, I was, was just following orders, not my big, is, is that mm -hmm. essentially what that means? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So if I, let's say you see me litter, okay. which, you know, outside. Which I have, litter. by the way. I have seen you do that when we hung out in Chicago. I love littering. Big, big litter. It's, it's, it's kind of um, absurd because, like, there's a trash can sometimes right next to us. And you, like, act, or you're making an active choice to throw an empty water bottle. Actually, it's a half-filled water bottle. Yep. You're not, you're just tossing, like, half, like, Chris, like, why not just, you know, yeah. why don't you? I just, I just, I, I, I walk to the trash can. And then I just put it on the ground. Right I next even to the seen trash you that's, that's throw it out, and then like, I, and then like minutes later, we would pass by Seven Eleven. You're like, oh shit, I'm thirsty. Let me get some more water. And you get another water bottle, the same one. Yeah, same smart water. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I go up to trash cans. I take trash out, and then I leave that on the ground. Yeah, it's kind of. But yeah. hey, what did you did hey, you take the survey? I was just following orders. <laughs> I was just following. Who told orders. you me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. The vignettes that I gave them were, I told them to imagine a scenario in which you work for a reputable marketing firm. Okay. Uh, the firm is pursuing a major business deal with a potential client. In order to secure the deal, and then this is where we varied the, uh, the vignette here, they either saw you or your coworker, and then they either saw, are ordered by your boss to, or they saw nothing there. Uh, to lie on financial documents to make the company look better than it actually is. Uh, each participant only saw one of these four conditions. Oh, so these are four possible vignettes. Okay, 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 okay. Yep, so they saw four possible, they saw one of four possible okay. vignettes where they read a story about either them uh, lying on financial documents or their coworker lying on financial documents. And then their justification was either they were following orders by their boss or there was no oh, I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying, gotcha. Mm hmm. Yep. Here were the measures. And then after they read that, I asked how responsible and then I varied the question depending on their condition. How responsible are you or is your coworker for lying on the company documents mm. being like not at all responsible or extremely responsible? And then I also asked kind of similar question, how much punishment should you or your coworker receive for the act from no punishment to maximum punishment? Okay, so really quick, kind of simple study. Yep. Okay, so going into the results. So the first one, how responsible are you or is your coworker for lying on the company documents? So generally, what we found was that people actually hold themselves more responsible than their coworker. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I, I wondered about I, this and yeah. I was like, oh, I wonder if they give coworkers like I wonder if they give them the benefit of the doubt being like, oh, like, I don't know their situation. I don't know their motivations. Whereas if it's themselves, they're like, no, no, no. I was very responsible for it. Mm. You, are you, so that's a general are you saying that it, main if you, if you added another qualifier, like you like this coworker, you don't like this coworker, you think that would impact the results of the study? Not to complicate this. It could. Yeah, okay. It could. That, 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 that could be like another variable for a follow-up follow yeah, study. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then... Um, so this was whether this was the based on the target. Uh -huh. Are they judging themselves or are they judging a coworker? Then I also found that uh, the justification, uh, how responsible did they hold somebody, whether they were following orders or if they were doing it on their own volition, it wasn't really that different. They were basically the same. Okay. Uh, so this is kind of consistent with what we've seen in the introduction for the Milgram experiment. Whereas if somebody says, I was just following orders, we don't really care. Like that, that, that doesn't really change it for us. You still did the act. Mm -hmm. You're still just as responsible as if you were just doing it on your own accord. Now, both of these were non-significant uh, effects. So who knows? We're interpreting non-significant effects here. Um, it would be very sinful in academia. Uh, but in bad content, hey, we're, uh, 
We're we're, yo, we're judging anything we yo, got. We got our own standards, homie. We got our own standards, baby. Yeah. Hey, hey. hey. Yeah, you know yeah, who's yeah. on this fucking advisory panel? Me and you, baby. Me and you. Me, <laughs> me you, and a baby. Just just for a neutral yeah. party. The baby is a is a is a control variable that we've to to, to balance our biases. And we include the baby just in the spirit of research and psychology. You know, sometimes babies are used in experiments, yeah. so we use babies in our research panels as well. Yeah. So. And honestly, Herbert's a fucking chill guy, you know? <laughs> just sits there. Chill baby. Yeah, just listens to whatever we got to say. You, know, we, you yeah. know, usually when they're crying, that usually means like, yes, let's let's keep going. So, yeah. 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 So we, uh, we respond positively to babies yeah. crying. Okay. Now we're going to look at the interaction between the two. So now we're, we were looking at the two variables separately. Okay. Now we're looking at both of them together. So... As you can see here from this graph, people generally hold themselves more responsible than their coworker. And they generally place higher responsibility on people when they're following orders compared to when they're doing it on their own accord. Oh, Again, man. those differences are very I small. wonder if I think very lowly of people to think that people would not take accountability for their actions, Chris. What does it say about me? You could run a study on me that I I, I, I did not think people yeah. would take accountability, at least in this specific study. Um, yeah, people did. And they thought that they thought themselves and their coworkers are equally as responsible, basically. Oh, okay. Uh but they they thought they thought themselves were a little more responsible. I, I, so I'll so I'll and, take the hit. So we're both at fault, but you know, I'll take the hit if need be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's kind of what okay. it is. Uh we found the exact same pattern for the punishment question. Uh so that's not too interesting. People believed that uh themselves, they themselves should be punished a little bit more severely than their coworkers. And there wasn't really a big difference between whether or not they were following orders. Again, super small differences, interpreting non-significant findings, very sinful, uh, but we're doing it. Sin, because because now, research is a religion. Let's be let's be clear here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. The church <laughs> church of academia. You gotta go, you gotta go every Sunday and pray to the P value. <laughs> Okay, now I added another interesting question that I didn't think would would pan out, okay. but I asked people I asked people to indicate how old they are because I was like, oh, um, I wonder if, if, discor if discor I wonder if age makes yeah, a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so age. So how does age affect perceptions of responsibility? Oh, this was this was almost like near significant. As people get older, they attribute more responsibility. Well, to look people. at that slope. So whether that's yourself. Yeah, I've right. Whether that's yourself or a coworker, and whether you're following orders or you're acting on your own accord, as people got older, they hold people more responsible. Whoa. Outside of themselves, you mean? Yeah. No. So for themselves and their coworker. Oh. So just in general, so, whether it's yourself, whether it's a coworker, whether you're following orders, whether you're not following orders and you're just doing it on your own, older people hold others including themselves more responsible for their actions than younger you can people. snowboard snowboard down the slope homie i can i see you in yeah. lake tahoe it's, right now it's going steep down. bro it's you steep. would love this you would love going down this hill i can see it now um so what what the takeaway from that is that so these results are consistent with how humans behaved mm. during the nuremberg trials in 1945 the event that spurred stanley milgram's interest in obedience to authority so even if somebody is, you know, quote unquote, following orders, we don't we don't really care. And we attribute equal levels of responsibility and punishment to the perpetrators. Mm. So perhaps we need to think more about how power and authority figures in our lives influence our behaviors and the lengths that somebody will go to maintain their position or status in a hierarchy. Not not saying that the excuses during the Nuremberg trials were acceptable. There is a line that you have to draw. If your boss tells you to kill somebody, <laughs> you got to say no. You can't just say you're following orders. There's a it line. Should be, yeah, it should be clarified. Uh, that content does not endorse the Nuremberg. <laughs> no. no. does it more. No. Well, right. the trials the themselves trials were, were the trials, fine. No, 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 no. Oh, shit. I'm going to get us canceled. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. If I attempt to stop us getting canceled, I was getting us canceled further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So luckily, most of us will never... Uh, encounter a situation like that. But we do need to understand how power dynamics can influence humans and the Milgram experiment kind of sheds a dark light on what humans yeah, are capable right. of. Right. I think the Nuremberg's trials just, in, I mean, that's a very extreme example, right? 
I, I we don't always find. I think the point you're trying to mm-hmm. make. We're never always gonna find ourselves in a position where we're gonna be. Think I mean, <laughs> knock on wood, like pressure to kill somebody, <laughs> another human being, right? Yeah. And if that were to occur, those are very ex- extreme circumstances. Like I would put money that most people oh, in yeah. any stable state of mind. Um, when there's not, you know, some sort of thing leveraged against them, they are most likely going to make the decisions to not kill somebody, no matter how much. Hope, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the fall. That that's the yeah. So it's it's basically. So so what it's saying is that like, whether or not somebody was following orders, we don't really care about that. But maybe we should, mm. uh, because what what this follow up research shows is that. Whether or not somebody was following orders, people don't really account for that. People just say, hey, I don't care if you're following orders. I don't care if you did it on your own accord. You're just as responsible Mm. for that. And you should get the same punishment. But what the Milgram experiment showed was that most people would do some pretty heinous shit if uh, an authority figure was uh, commanding or or ordering them to do so. So we we, we really have to kind of think about that interaction and how we use that to navigate life. Okay. Uh, How should we? I don't know. Stay tuned. So how would we uh, how would we write this research, Chris? This is what we do. <laughs> Our famous thing we do every episode is it is this is this uh, is this research legit or not? How are we writing it, Chris? The Milgram yeah, experiment. Are we writing it legit or not? I give it. I give it. I give it one one thumbs up. One thumbs up instead of two. One uh, one less thumb because it was kind of fucked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. But one thumbs up because it it sparked a really interesting conversation. It it show it showcased kind of uh, the kind of the underbelly of uh, human potential, you know, in a in a weird dark way. Yeah. Ooh. All right, that was the follow up research. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks. Smash that, smash Bye. that shit. You know what to do. Bye.